Welcome back to the channel and today I want to try to create a creation that can in enter a tidally locked orbit around the center of this asteroid field here because uh, as we've discovered in a recent video you can actually enter orbit around the center of this asteroid field which I am going to try to accomplish right now uh perhaps maybe there we go we're starting to spin around and uh let's go ahead and slow ourselves down a little bit more and i believe we are oh wait uh, i should have entered baseball to the sandbox mode oh no <laughs> but we're in orbit as you can see um but we are not tidally locked to this uh sphere i'm i can't i'm gonna i'm gonna call it a planet i know it's like just a dense asteroid but i'm just gonna be calling it a planet so I know that we can get in a pretty tight orbit around this, but the difficult thing with that was I kept having to adjust my angle and trajectory to uh, make sure that I was constantly facing in the direction of my travel. However, if I am tidally locked, what that essentially means is I am rotating one full rotation at the same rate as one full orbit. So I'll try to imitate a tidal lock right now. So if I just keep facing the planet as I rotate around, um, that is essentially what a tidal lock is, but I wanna have it be completely automatic. I wanna have a completely automated tidal lock and I don't actually know how I'm gonna accomplish this yet. I have not figured that out quite yet. Um, but I think I will have to transition to Peaceful Sandbox because I'm not here for battles. I'm here for science. Science rules. All right, so I am going to use this uh, right here. And this is just a slightly modified version of my uh, sonic boom ship that I broke all the sound barriers on every planet on. And some people were asking why I didn't break the sound barrier on this asteroid here. That's because there's no atmosphere and you need an atmosphere to break the sound barrier. But with this currently in its state, I can go forward and I can go backwards and I can turn and rotate in all of the directions. Okay, so I have all of the controls I need. So now uh, what I want to be able to do, I only need forward and backwards thrust because to modify my orbit, that's all I need to speed up or slow down to increase or decrease my distance away from the planet. But what's going to make it easier to do that is a tidal lock, which means I want to keep one side of my vehicle always facing the planet. So that way it looks like I'm just driving around it as if I was steering and I'm about to get hit. Well, that was a lot gentler than I was expecting. Thank you. Thank you for the nice little nudge there. So as far as sensors go, um, we have an angle sensor, but like, how do we create a tidal lock that is versatile? Like, I don't want to have to be on a particular part of the planet, like part of the orbit. I want to be able to orbit it at any angle from any approach and just stay tidally locked. I think distance sensors might be the only thing, but then that locks me in potentially to, I, I can only stay a certain distance away from it for it to work. All right, I'm gonna go with distance sensor for now. All right, so here's what I got right now. I got these distance sensors and they are going to be at like 45 degree angles for now. This is adjustable. And if it detects that the planet, the surface of the planet is pulling away on one side, um, then the sensor should no longer detect the planet causing, and then it'll, it'll put an input to rotate. So it continues to detect the planet. Uh, and that's the plan. That's the, uh, I'm in a bad spot. That's the, uh, the temporary plan right now, or the prototype plan right now. So now this sensor, if it detects the planet, it wants to to rotate me to the right. Yaw right. So that means a positive signal to my yaw. So a positive signal to these two gyros. And then this one, if it is detecting the planet, it wants to rotate me to my left. So then I want it to send a negative output um, to the yaw. Now the distance of these, I guess I could have like an infinite, I guess the biggest distance. No, then like everything in the way. You know what there has to be? There has to be a toggle. I need to be able to turn this on. I'm gonna have this logic gate is gonna have a toggle. So now I need an AND gate. So now this has to be on and this sensor has to detect the planet and then it will send an, uh, a positive output here. 
So now I need another AND gate for the negative. So this AND gate will send a negative output to the yaw when it receives a signal from my, uh, my toggle on button and this distance sensor. I think I have it hooked up correctly. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste these to the other side, but I'm gonna replace the sensors with dummy blocks. Let's just see what happens when I approach the middle here. I don't know what the distance of 50 meters looks like in space, but I need to slow down a lot. Oh boy, we're getting close here. Oh boy, we're hitting the planet, dang it. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is hard, it's hard to get it to establish the initial orbit. Okay, this is not bad. My sensors are starting to detect. Okay, good, good, good. So if I want to get closer on the other side, now I need to slow down here. All right, and you know what? Let's start, let's turn it on. It should activate. Why is that not working? Do I have it reversed or something? All right, you know what? I need to not be here right now. I need a test spot for my logic because my logic is not at all working as intended. Oh, we do have an issue of the steering hinges are actually steering. I'm going to turn it on. And the sensor, it's not working. Oh, I think it's supposed to send a negative. All right, yeah, that was why. And then turn the sensor on. Why is this not working? Oh, I gotta put this back to a one. That's why I had the sensor also on a negative. This has to receive a positive input. Okay, yes. Yes, now you can see it automatically redirects me when that sensor's gone. And then it automatically redirects me when that, that sensor's gone, okay. I think it's working now. So let me do a quick test. I'm gonna drive by uh, this thing right here. Oh yeah, you can see it's trying to, or right, hold on. It's trying to orient myself towards it. Now, I really wish 50 meters, like space is so big. We need, everything needs to be expanded for space. I'm just gonna try to gently go in here, get myself, establishing the orbit, I haven't quite, settled in on a on the best strategy to get established with the orbit all right and now slow down a lot i need to slow down a lot more than i just did all right let's just adjust my trajectory that way all right this is happening all right i'm gonna activate it now number one dang it <laughs> oh i don't have a good speed where am i whoa 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 this trajectory is not right okay now when i get far away there we go go a little bit faster See, it's trying. It's trying here. Now I want to get close. Go a little bit slower. This is starting. I'm not. I'm not doing any turning inputs. I'm only doing uh, velocity inputs right now. It's not the smoothest. It is really not the smoothest tidal lock, but in principle, it is working. Only one side of me is facing it at once. All right. I think. Like what could be adjusted here? Maybe a wider ang a wider angle is gonna make it so I have to get closer though. So this thing, the angle of them uh, does change how far they can see uh, in their distance from me. If I just have them facing straight at the planets, it'll be I can be much farther away, but I don't think it'll be as um, precise of an angle. But tidal lock is working. We've accomplished the basic principle of it. I just don't know how much improvement there is to be had. All right, so now it should be really easy for me to figure out what's the closest and farthest part of my orbit. All right, so here's the closest. So if I want to get closer, I slow down here. That may have been too much. That was kind of a lot, wasn't it? All right, but you can see now we're a little bit more consistent. And this is much easier to work out this orbit trajectory because I don't have to worry about constantly turning myself to face the right direction to slow down or speed up. All right, so where's the closest part again? I just want to keep getting closer. It's actually, I'm, I have a pretty even orbit. I just need to slow down a bit. There's the furthest it looks like. There we go. Yeah, now we're dialing it in here. All right, getting away. This is so nice. All I have to do is worry about the thrust. I don't have to worry about my angle at all. This actually kind of works. Now, the closer I get, the more I wish I can. <gasps> I can program this to have an adjustable angle. Okay. All right, we got to go into build mode. All right, we, we got to get out of orbit, though. I'm sorry. I'm boosting out. We are boosting out of orbit. That was actually so extreme. Look at that. That's so cool. All right, I know how to make this adjustable now. Okay, so these hinges, uh, I'm gonna set 90 degrees hold position, and then I just need to have the right control. All right, check it out. So now, by pressing Z or X, I can manually open and close these sensors to adjust their angle, which I think 
I can find a nice sweet spot to have a much more precise uh, feedback from the planet. So now the problem is I got to get back in orbit on that thing. Now it looked like I could get a pretty good orbit, a close orbit at like close to 100 kilometers an hour. So I'm going to have to manually here. Let's uh, since I'm going farther away. Oh boy. Uh, get out of here. Ah, oh, this is hard. The initial entry into orbit is like the hardest part for me right now. But I'm going to move these as far towards the plant. Dang it. All right, let's try this again. This one I'm going to be prepared. And I have my angle sensors all the way out. Okay, here we go. I have it activated and nope, 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 nope. Slow down. There we go. Slow down a little bit more. Now let's open up my sensors just a little bit. Face here. Activate them. All right, there we go. It's trying. It's trying. This is good. This is promising so far. Yeah. All right, good. All right, now where is my closest part of the orbit? I'm not doing any more um, angle controls, rotation controls. That's all automatic right now. So now I'm trying to get myself, I'm trying to use that to get myself closer to the planet. But I need to determine where my close part is. Here we go. And then slow down a little bit there. I was a little bit late on that. All right, slow down a little bit here. All right, good. Good, this is happening. All right, slow down a little bit here. Oh boy, my angle isn't great. I'm not facing sideways yet. So now what I'm gonna do is open up the angle a little bit. Yeah, that's getting me more precision. A wider angle is better, especially now that I'm closer. Here we go. All right, slow down a little bit here. Speed up a little bit here to even it out some. Yeah, this is much better. All right, the wider the angle is, the better it is but also the closer you have to be. How wide can I make the angle? Wow. Actually, it's not It's not the wider the better. There is a sweet spot because the wider you go, then all of a sudden you're starting like angling a little bit away because the sensor takes more time to detect the planet. So you do want it to be a little bit more towards the planet, but this is nice right here. All right, let's start uh, getting closer and closer now. Slow down a little bit. Oh, that might've been too much. Yeah, that was a little bit too much. At least we didn't get damaged. Slow down a little bit. It's not the it's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. You can see the angle of my thrust is not perfectly in line with the rainbow maker, with the rainbow trail. But I can't think of a better way right now to have a tidal lock. I'm curious what other people could come up with for title to get a tidal lock in an orbit. Like I wonder if you could get one that perfectly uh goes at the same rate as your orbit, because mine is just going in little notches. It's not very smooth. But, I mean, it's working. It's working for its purpose. I'm getting pretty close to this orbit now and not having to worry about my angle. All right, so now if I go into, like, follow camera or something. There we go, vehicle chase. So before, I think, like, a mode like this where where I was facing, the camera was facing in the direction of my vehicle, I couldn't do a hands-free follow of my orbit because my vehicle would just keep rotating not rotating but it wouldn't be rotating meaning i would keep facing away from the planet towards the planet but now i can just kind of set it and we can actually feel a little bit more about how it feels to be in orbit a little bit uh a little bit more natural i think the tidal lock is a much more natural feeling orbit than not a tidal lock but yeah the angle does annoy me i'm gonna mess with the angle a little bit okay that seems to even me out just a little bit more okay there we go I went a little bit wider, and I am definitely more well aligned now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the closer you- when you are closer, wider- Oh, this is really good! This is the best tidal lock yet! Okay, I'm glad I experimented a little bit there. Because last time, when I was farther away, the wider angle felt worse. Now the wider angle feels way better. Yeah! All right, I'm happy with this. I'm way, way happier with this. Look at how, look at the sensors. They are almost facing forward and back completely like 90 degrees. What if I do that? Okay, now you see, now that ruins it. So I do need the angle just to be very, very slightly. It's like a three degree angle or something. Five degrees, maybe. Well, that I think that's mission accomplished. Tidal lock success. We have a stable orbit with a stable tidal lock, we are constantly facing the same direction towards the uh, the planet, so to speak. I still feel like there's a lot more fun to be had with like the orbital mechanics of this. So let me know if you guys have any other ideas like that you'd like to see me attempt. 
despite my lack of experience with this kind of stuff. It is fun figuring it out as I go along though. So I'll be looking in the comments below for those kind of suggestions. If you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.